ever since I was a kid, I've been really interested in growing things and watching things grow. In fact, uh, when I was growing up, we had a cornfield in the backyard because it was a new development area. So the, the farmer would plant things all the way up until I think I was, you know, uh, 16 or 17. And so this cornfield was a, a, a you know, a place where you could basically do anything, make these uh, mud, uh, mud castles or whatnot. And uh, one thing that I started to do was to plant things back there. And I'd come across all these seed packets in our garage and I would just randomly throw out seeds, having no idea what was planted where and watch things sort of sprout up and grow. Uh, tomatoes was something that was always really successful, for, but I've always identified myself from early on as someone who is pretty successful at growing things, uh, but not trying that hard to do it. I didn't have to do anything, but it's amazing. And, and this was something that I would come out and look at every day, you know, regardless of how little it would grow from day to day. It was something that I enjoyed watching. Um, fast forward until uh, I was probably uh, 28. And one of my friends was going off to chiropractic school and it was, you know, six or seven hours away, but we would always engage in these projects and it was always kind of competitive. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to do is to see who could grow certain uh, plants and we wanted to grow trees. We were interested in fruit trees, you know, trees that they're not just pretty, but something that also produces something that you could see. Uh, grow. And so we went to Hy-Vee and uh, grocery store and we grabbed a bunch of different types of seed uh, fruits, fruits with seeds in them. And we came back and just planted them in these little cups with dirt in them as a, as a competitive thing to see who could grow these fast, who would be the first one to grow something, whose would be the biggest and most successful. And uh, lo and behold, uh, not long after we did this, I had uh, several orange trees sprout up along with the grapefruit tree and it's amazing to think that something that you eat you know you understand it in philosophy but to actually see it at, at play normally something that you throw away can actually become something productive and now in 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 uh in a pot in my backyard i have these trees and uh, it's, uh, a couple of them are as tall as i am already and three more years and they'll be producing oranges themselves. But to be able to go out there and look at that, and the thing with trees like that is that there's a permanence to them. So wherever you plant them is a place that you're gonna stay for a while. And so uh, that's the thing that I've been thinking about lately. Where do I want to plant these? Because as they're getting bigger, you want to think of some permanence to plant these trees. So uh, that's what I came up with for oranges. Wonderful story. Judy, Adam, input, feedback? Your, uh, as a child, your blatant disregard for agricultural authority. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, I mean, that, uh, I, I do not have a green thumb, so I am envious of you. But I can, I can completely relate to the, uh, right, like speaking of uh, philosophically understanding a concept and then seeing it take place in front of you are, are two completely different experiences. And um, I think the more fulfilling one is, is being able to witness it yourself rather than just the, the philosophy of it and speaking about it. And so, um, yeah, it's super, super cool. And, and uh, yeah, I can just relate to that, uh, you know, the, the enjoyment of seeing it, uh, but I cannot relate to the uh, perspective of having a green thumb. So congratulations there, sir. Nice. Judy? I loved the, uh, the creativity, the, the thinking behind the creativity, and then the adventure. Let's go to the grocery store, buy some fruits. Um, why not? <laughs> However, I think about the people that would have said, well, those won't grow. Don't do that. And, and look at what's happened, what you've produced, and now you're thinking... Where do I want to plant these? And it's, it's just a beautiful uh, creative adventure that I uh, learned about and thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you. I wanna, I wanna carry on something from what you, you, what you were just talking about, Judy, is when we share a story, and all of us have done this, is 
you you spurn an internal dialogue for your audience. They start in their heads and in their emotions, they start talking along with you as you are sharing your story because it has an adventure and we've all been on adventures and we've been kids and right, you, you're really like, I'm so glad he's a green thumb. Like, I've, I've thought the same thing. Like, we're, we're, we're transported to places and we, we are carried along and we have this conversation with the, with the speaker. And I think as a storyteller, you need to keep that in mind. Is what am I saying? What are the, the, uh, the, the cues that I'm giving and the direction that we're going in? What is the audience thinking themselves along the way? Or, or I don't even think about like, what are they thinking? Like, know that they are, are on a journey with you, right? And they'll stay with you as long as the journey continues. Uh, I, I agree with Adam as well, the whole um, uh, philosophical idea brought to life. I think what I would have liked is uh, more anger of specifics, right? Is, is, is give us the hometown. It's not like, um, I was like 15 or 16, may, may, give, give us a solid, I was 16 years, up until I was 16 years old. Because if you waffle within the, what you're saying, the audience will kind of see a gray area that's not perfectly clear to them. They know what, you know what, they know what 16 looks like, right? And 16 is a good age. It's, it's about, a lot of things happen at that time, right? So uh, anchor your audience in, in a few more uh, specifics. Um, I think what it also did is you revealed something about your personality, right? Is, is willing to try experiments and try, uh, try different things. And if I can see it taking traction, I will give it my full attention. Right? And I think that is even something in the story you could use as a metaphor to explain why you do what you do, right? You're, you're a teacher. And, and that's something you get with students also, is you get this little seedling and you, you get to watch it grow. So I think you have a real opportunity for uh, revealing personality. Um, I love the word, something that, some, something that we would throw away turns into something productive. That was really, really good uh, word choice. Uh, an even longer pause or a repetition of that. Like, let's say it again. Like, yeah, it was, was, was great. Permanence, all of it. You guys, Awesome, that's so much.